action. <laughs> cool. What up, dude? What's good? What an intro to a this podcast. Is, uh, Sean Mike Kelly. You've got one of the most prolific podcasts in the world, bro. Mm. You bang out so much content. It's incredible. You pop out like three or four full on reels a day. Yeah. And that's be, just on Instagram. Yeah. Not to mention YouTube. Are you anywhere else besides Instagram and YouTube? Uh, TikTok's decent. Twitter, we're struggling. I need I need some help there if anyone's watching this. But yeah, those are the big X. three. X now, yeah. Yeah, you pump out so much content. It's incredible. When I did the pod with you last uh, few months ago, I came in there and I saw there's like a line of people leaving, a line of people like coming in. <laughs> and I'm like, how many of these do you do a day? And you're like, five, six, seven. That's insane. Yeah, it's fun. Super cool. How did you go from not doing podcasts to then doing them? Dude, I knew I had to go all out from the start, honestly. So that's always been the, the schedule for me. Why like did all, you know that? I learn. I felt like doing that way, I could learn as fast as possible. If I was only filming one a week, the results would be too slow for me to examine how I could get to the next level. So that's why I was able to grow so quick. Wow, bro. I've never heard someone say that before. I knew I needed to go all out from the start. I was overpaying for studio time. I was having on guests I shouldn't have, but... In the process, I was learning so much so fast that now I've gotten to the point where I feel like I'm a seasoned podcaster, even though I'm only a year in. A year in? But you have more pods under your belt than most people have been doing it for five, six years. Yeah, we're at 800-something now. Holy smokes, dude. How many Joe Rogan got? He's at 2,400-ish on one show, and then he has the MMA show, which is at a few hundred. Oh, I so he's close he to 3,000. Yeah. Wow. So when you first started... Did you think like, oh, this is going to be my niche or did you just take anyone? At first it was business and money. That was at that stage of my life a year ago. I was chasing that pretty heavily. I still am. But back then that was the most important thing for me. Business and money. Yeah. So you'd bring on entrepreneurs, business owners, financial gurus. Mainly. And then I had on some health people, mm -hmm. got a blood test. I was like, holy shit. I don't know anything about health. Cool. I need to have on experts. That's why I have on people like you, doctors, different types of diets. That's so dope, bro. Podcast to me, maybe you think the same way, is like it's a it's a way to almost get free consulting, free coaching. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And That's definitely a part of it. And it's definitely a way to make really cool connections with really cool people in cool places. Dude, the group chat's hilarious. I just saw yesterday because there's a group chat of all the previous guests, right? And you're in it. I'm not sure if you read it. WhatsApp? Yeah, on WhatsApp. I don't, I don't think I'm in it. Oh, really? I thought maybe, I added Maybe you. I got kicked out. Oh, you might have got kicked out for your diet, man. <laughs> add me back <laughs> in, bro. Yeah, I'll add you in. But anyways, in the chat, this guy's like, hey, I got a $40 million house for sale. And someone responded, hey, I'm the advisor for uh, the, which it was some big politician, I forget, but like former president. They're interest, they might be interested in this house. So just the stuff I see in the chat is hilarious. That's cool, man. There, you know, there used to be this group in New York. I forget what it was called. I forget who organized it. But what you just said reminded me of this. This lady would host these events once a month and she would just bring everybody she knew to her house. And there was like 50 people in the house. And one by one, somebody would go up in front of the group and they would say what they need. Mm. They'd be like, I need a boyfriend. <laughs> I haven't had a boyfriend in five years. I'm looking for a boyfriend. Someone in the crowd would be like, oh, I know a great guy. He's actually the son of George Clooney or wow. something. And I can actually work at the hotel. I know he's going to be there tomorrow. Do you want me to put you in touch? And so everybody in the crowd would usually have something that the person on, on the stage needed. Mm. And so again, I'm looking for a house to rent. This person would be like, oh, my next door neighbor is just moving out now. I can get, I can hook you up. So it's like everyone in that house had a solution for everyone's problem. I love that. Supernatural, just organic. Hey, who's got a solution? That reminds me of that WhatsApp group. Dude, every community needs that, like a town hall almost. Yeah. Where you could voice out your concerns and then get them solved instantly. Mm -hmm. That's instantly. awesome. Wow, so 800 pods in, and what's the vision for the future of it? Uh, to continue to inspire and educate on new perspectives. People aren't exposed to the type of information on my show, yeah. like typically on a daily basis. So I think it's important to get that. Like no one's learning about fruitarian diets randomly. Right, true. Yeah, you're bringing a lot of alternative views to the mainstream, it seems. Yeah. Because you have a lot of mainstream viewers, but all your guests don't seem to be mainstream. No, I That's actually, I, I those episodes are my least favorite, typically, the mainstream celebrities, because mm -hmm. they just can't be themselves. Right. Yeah, every time I watch one of your clips, like today on the drive over, I watched this clip of this guy saying how, like, 
don't end your lease early, sell it back to the dealership. <laughs> and rather than paying four grand as like a penalty, you can actually sell it to the dealership and make five grand. Right. And that's those sort of gems are out there. Mm-hmm. There's so many of those gems and you seem your podcast seems to just keep collecting all those gems. I'm good at finding them, yeah. And then how does okay, so you have eleven million plus followers now on Instagram. When did that Instagram start? Uh, I had it since high school, but I started putting heavy money into it during that giveaway phase of Instagram. I'm not sure if you were on there during that. What giveaway phase? So there's a few companies. High Key Clout was one of them. Uh, there was Basically, they would organize these giveaways where they would give away iPhones, sometimes cars, and people had to follow your page to enter. Oh, that's cool. So that's how I gained millions fast. So let's say I want to do a giveaway right now, which I do do giveaways. I gave away Vitamix last week. Yeah. Let's say I want to give away Vitamix. I tell people... I pay you to promote the Vitamix and say Ted's giving away Vitamix? Follow Pretty him? much, but they would do that on a higher level. So they would pay Kim Kardashian. They would pay people with 100 million followers to post the giveaway. And then they would have to follow you to enter the giveaway. And it'd be you and 69 other accounts that they had to follow. Everyone that page Holy followed. Smoke. So you so, paid to be one of those 69 people? Yeah, so all 70 of those people were paid. So not only are you getting followers, but you're getting real followers, which is cool. Wow. So that was one of your strategies early on. I milked the shit out of that. It got so saturated now. Those don't really work anymore. How much did you pay? Dude, per, I spent f- over... Per, per shut up. Uh, each giveaway was different, but I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. No way. Yeah, it started adding up. And I was, at a certain point, I stopped because I was like, holy shit, I'm not even posting anything yet. So. How are you seeing the ROI on that? Like, what's the ROI on I don't a, even on know. If, I don't know if there was a direct money ROI yet because I did this years ago and I never mm. sold anything to those followers. But now they're podcast listeners, so... But you don't sell anything on the pod either? Not yet. And that's something I battle with daily. Do you battle with the uh, getting sponsors? Uh, if I use the brand or like the brand, I've turned down a lot. So let's say we've got a brand. Let's, I won't name a brand here. Fuck it. It's my podcast. <laughs> let's say it's school. Yeah. Let's say school wants to sponsor your show. You've done sponsorships with companies like that in the past. Yeah. Yeah. We just had AT&T last week. Okay. So AT&T only shows up as a sponsor on your long form video. Either long form or audio. Oh, so people listen these, to the audio. Yeah, these sponsors haven't adapted to clips yet, which is a huge mistake in my opinion. Because that's they where, could just put their logo on the top left or something, right? Right, and that's where most of my viewers are. Because my yeah, my audience bro. is young; they're like teenagers, twenties. Right. So if they just top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right said sponsored by AT and T, brought to you by AT and T. They we way more impactful than the long form because we don't get nearly as many views on the long form. Right. So when you said you not having something to sell is something you battle with daily, is that like an ethics thing or you just haven't gotten clear on what to sell? I would say ethics because I want to feel like it's an equal or I'm giving more value. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want people thinking I'm ripping them off or being labeled as a core seller Mm -hmm. is a tricky thing these days. Do you think, yeah, and it's interesting too because your audience is so diverse. It's not like they're all watching you to learn one thing. They're just watching you to learn things in general. Yeah. Whereas before it was money and business. Now it's like money, business, health. Spirituality. Spirituality. It's hard to put that in something that they all want, right? It'd be tricky, yeah. Now even politics we're diving into because I'm seeing all the views Patrick Bet David's getting from his shift to business to politics, and mm. it's pretty gnarly. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I think one of the coolest things you could sell, it wouldn't be a digital program that you want to know how you'd feel about it, but it would just be like an in-person event, like a meetup, hangout. Yeah, I have those every month or two. Oh, yeah? Yeah, those are fun. In Vegas? Uh, new city every time, actually. No way. Yeah, because I like going to new cities, experiencing the culture, and meeting new people. Wow. And it's like a one-day mastermind or something? One. It's less. It's like four hours. Four-hour meetup? Yeah. And is there a speaker? Sometimes. We had Damon John speak at the last one. Do you speak? I don't. I, I need to work on that for so sure. So you just bring a bunch of people together. How many people, let's say? On average, 300. 300 people will show up. So you'll announce this on Instagram stories? Yeah. And be like, hey, we're going to Boston next week. Who wants to come? Mm-hmm. There's Would an event, right? People but yeah. pay? Uh, VIP pay 200. Sell like 50 of those in an event. So it'll bring in 10K, get a sponsor for like 5K. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a four hour event and you're getting sponsors? Yeah, one or two each event. And VIP people pay 50, 200 bucks? 200 bucks. And 50 people buy that usually? Usually, yeah. And then non VIP people pay what? Free. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do I get for VIP that I don't get for free? Separate access and then access to the speaker if there's one, and then what does separate access mean? Uh, like your own area. 
okay. like a back room or whatever. Um, and then Access some t- the, the sponsor products. So they'll give goodie bags sometimes. Wow, and a little special wristband. Yeah, it's all e- playing on the ego. Yeah, VIP wristband. Yeah, stick. it's funny. It's it's really not that much different, but. So how would you market an event? Like, let's your next event's coming up. How do you market that? What's the angle you take? Just stories. So no, I center. Like, why, why do you get people to come? What's the reason for coming? Networking mainly. Mm. Um, I'd say sometimes there's a speaker, but mainly access. That's sort of my value to people. Proximity to you? No, not to me, to my network. Oh. Yeah. Cause it's kind of w- like the WhatsApp group in real life. Pretty much. Because I'm one degree away from anyone in this country. That's yeah, notable, which that's is pretty sick, crazy bro. to say. I'm that's not trying to be cocky. But. No, no, no. You are, though. You just look. <laughs> I've seen your podcast, bro. You're like with Grant Cardone and big names. I mean, Trump, Elon, Trump. one degree away. It's crazy. Yeah. Mark, really cool. Bezos. I mean, it's like these people are all going to be coming on the show eventually. That's yeah. how close I am. <laughs> I love it. Do you think you'll ever start doing longer form podcasts like Joe Rogan style? We're, we're experimenting with 45 minutes to an hour, um, but that's... I'm mainly doing that to get more clips, if we're being honest. I don't mm. even care about the long form. But no, but just that's, that's cool. Like, it makes sense. You're in flow. Yeah, because 30 minutes, you could get about three to five good clips, but an hour, you could get, you know, up to 10. So if it's a really notable guest. Wow. That's sort of the way I think about it. Super smart. Super smart. So YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, no Facebook Reels yet? We're on there. I haven't seen how many views we get there, to be honest. But And is everything you have on Instagram, is that on Facebook? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We use AI for that. Oh, yeah. Repost it for you? Yeah. I think it's repurpose.io. No way, dude. Yeah. So it can post on LinkedIn, Snapchat, everywhere. Snapchat? Yeah. We're on Snapchat, too. Damn, bro. Got to be cool. everywhere, man. Gary yeah, V yeah, strategy. Yeah, 100%. I love that. So... Who, so you said you don't like having mainstream people on because they can't be themselves? In general, so there's been a few that are decent. But when you say can't be themselves, well, how do you mean by that? Um, they're so worried about being judged, typically. If but then, politically correct. Yeah, but the narrative is changing a little bit on that, which is good. They're, they're starting to slowly open up more because of podcasts, actually. What would you say, like, as an example here, what would you say for yourself is one of your strongest beliefs that most people in the mainstream would disagree with you about? Wow. I would say on the medicine side, that came to mind right away. So I'm fully holistic. Don't take any Western medicine. Don't even take Tylenol, uh, Advil. Some people take that every day, which is crazy to me. Yeah, none of that shit. I don't even like going to hospitals. Why? Just, I've had on so many holistic experts and it just feels better to me personally. So if you've got a Let's say you put your back up. You're in a lot of pain. What are you going to do? I'll go for that. But go in terms what? of just if my back goes out, I'll go for surgery. No, not surgery. Like let's say you back pain. Back pain? Yeah. Oh, you, pain? I'll treat it holistically. Like how? It'd be chiropractor. It would be probably massage, um, some sort of CBD cream, hmm. something like that. Would you take something like Kratom? What is that? Kratom? K-R-A-T-O-M? I've heard of it, but I don't know what it does. It's a very strong natural painkiller. If it's natural, then yes. It's like green tea powder. Okay. It tastes disgusting, but it works. Taste doesn't matter for me when it comes to. Taste disgusting. Hey, isn't that like a Buckley's thing? It tastes gross, but it works. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but it also. It's like a psychoactive, like caffeine in a way. It's not caffeine, but it's it stimulates the mind like caffeine. Mm. But uh, yeah, if you haven't tried it. Give it a go. I'll definitely get some because sometimes I get some basketball injuries. But yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm against most vaccines too because I know they're making kids get 50 a year or 50 vaccines now to go to public school. What? How many? 50. Do you remember when you went to public school? You, you probably didn't get 50, but you got a good amount, right? In Canada, I think I got one and I refused to get the other ones. Oh, that's it? I just dipped, yeah. Oh, wow. That's so low. I feel like I had to get at least 10 when I went, but Whoa. now they're closer to 50. Whoa. Dude, public school, bro. I got a friend in Canada right now. He's pulling his kids out of school. He just pulled them out like a week ago. Because his kid came home from school. His kid's like 12. And his kid was like crying. He's like, Daddy, I don't want to stick things up my butt. And the dad's like, what? What do you mean? And the kid's like, today at school we had sex class, and the teacher said there's three types of sex, and we should see which ones we like best by trying them all out. 
oral sex, vaginal sex, and anal sex. Mm. And the kid was scared to put something up his butt. And the dad's like, this, my kid's 12. Why is he learning about this shit? Jeez. And the kid also s- told the dad that in class, there's this girl named Samantha or something, and she identifies as a wolf. <laughs> and she brings a cage to class, and she sits in the cage like a little dog, and she just... Uh, Licks her paws and shit. Oh my gosh. And you have to identify her as a wolf. Insane. Samantha's a wolf. Bro, she means a cage didn't sit on the desk or table, and the teachers have to like talk to her as if she's a fucking dog. Yeah, I heard there's girls that come as cats and they bring a litter box for the public restroom. Oh my god. And they, they're allowed to um like spit on you and stuff since they're cats. No way. Yeah. Spit on you? Yeah. Cats do that? I guess. I don't know. Dude, that's wild. Yeah, it's a weird place now, man. Public school is scary. So different. How old are you? 27. 27? Yeah, we're similar. I'm 33. Six years difference. Um, you going to have kids? Yeah. I'm already planning how to raise them, dude, to be honest, because it's such a weird time. It's a good, it's a good uh, thing to start thinking about, bro. I also think it's wise to ask really cool parents, hey, how did you raise your kids? Mm-hmm. And probably read some books on it. Because we don't know. We're just assuming that like this is how you do it. Yeah. But there's probably a lot of mistakes other people have already made. Like one of them is, this is a good one, bro, is rewarding rewarding your kids for doing things they should be doing. Mm. It's called punishing by reward. So what you don't realize is that if I rewarded you for drinking water, like here, Benny, here's a, here, Shawnee, here's a $5 bill for drinking your water ball. Now you're drinking the water just for the five bucks. And when the five bucks stops being given to you, you stop drinking the water. Interesting. So I got rewarded for doing chores. I got rewarded financially for doing the dishes and uh, making my bed. Mm. Guess what I hate doing now? <laughs> doing the dishes? I, and doing my bed because I'm not getting paid. Yeah. And I'm 33, bro. I'm uh, just realizing this, though. But there's a great guy. His name's Alfie Cohn. And he wrote, uh, he's got a good YouTube audio called the case against competition mm. and punishing by reward. And then also, I think uh, he's got a book about why homework is bullshit as well. But he's a, got such a cool perspective on raising kids. And I've learned a lot of cool perspectives from him that I wouldn't have thought of. That's so interesting. I didn't even think about that, but I hate the dishes. I used to get paid for it too. Bro. 50 cents. There we go, dude. Man. And make my bed. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's cool. And I had a friend who, uh, she wanted to start a podcast like you, but she didn't know what to make it on. And so she's like, well, I want to have kids one day in the future, so why don't I just start interviewing all these cool parents mm. and asking them how they raise their kids? Yeah. So that might be a cool angle for you to take on some pods as well. It is. It's such applicable advice because a lot of people are having kids or have had them in the past. Have you seen the movie Captain Fantastic? No. Great film, bro, for raising Children. Okay. It sounds horrible. Captain Fantastic. I would change the name personally. <laughs> but it's a great movie on how to raise your kids alternatively. Mm. Super funny and you're on the edge of your seat the whole time watching it. I'll check it out. Yeah. I don't watch many movies these days. This one's worth it. Me neither. This one's like okay. inspiring. Dude, the It'll modern inspire ones. inspire you to be a good dad. Yeah, the modern movies freak me out, man. There's so much programming. It's nuts. Big time. It's like, holy crap. Like, you notice how many main actors are like girl heroes these days? Uh-huh. It's crazy. I, if I go on my Netflix, it's all girl heroes. Yeah, bro. It's turning women into this masculine figure. For real. Yeah. They're making the husband look stupid in a lot of these um, yeah. movies, too. Well, yeah, look at The Simpsons, even. Like, Homer's a dumbass. <laughs> that one, I, that's been around for a while, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, that's programming, though. And even if you look at a show, great, great show called Friends, Everyone Loves Friends. But if you actually study the characters, you study the men, all the men are like simps. That's true. All the men are simps. And if it's like there's like an alpha character, he comes on for like a special appearance, <laughs> like Brad Pitt or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And he dips. Michael Rappaport. Yeah. 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 They make the guys look like they're chasing the woman. Yeah, bro. And I didn't realize until maybe a couple years ago, maybe even like a year ago, bro, that I do not, men do not need to chase. Mm. We do not need to chase. But growing up, that was my only 
perspective. It's like, oh, yeah, you just go after the woman. You be confident. You go after her. You chase the woman. Like, fuck that. Yeah. They come to me. Once you have assets, they come to you. They come to me, bro. I will say when I was broke, they did not come. 100%. Yeah. They, well, yeah. You got to be in a position for them to come. <laughs> and if they're not coming to you, you got to get your shit together. Right. Um, but it's less about funds, actually. It's actually more about status. You think so? They don't know if you're rich or broke. Depends what city, I'd say. If you're a musician on stage, mm -hmm. you got millions of people in the crowd. All the, all the women want that guy. That's true. Yeah. They don't know how rich he is. Yeah. They assume he's rich. He's got the perspective of, or they get the perception of being rich. He's well connected, obviously. I think that's even more valuable than money. Just social being status. Well connected. Yeah. I can status. see that. Yeah, just being friends with a celebrity is status. And that typically comes with a nice bank account. Mm. But as long as you can provide for them, protect for them, and yeah, you've got that status. They just come, bro. Yeah. Come. I get, it's crazy. I get DMs daily and people, a lot of people know I'm in a relationship, but it's, it's funny because I used to never get those. Yes. Uh, how do you, how do you, no, knowing you have unlimited DMs, knowing you have unlimited options, how do you stay in this monogamous relationship and be okay with that? Uh, just focus, dude. And for me, so I've only said this once on another show, but I'm sapiosexual. What's that? I, I'm attracted to intelligence. Oh. So physical looks mean nothing to me. Oh, wow. Really? So, yeah. What do you mean mean nothing to you? Like, like most guys would look at a girl and say, like, she's beautiful, she's hot, and yeah. they'd be attracted to her. That, to me, doesn't matter. So let's say you're at the gym. We're at the gym. We're yeah. hitting bench. Girl walks by. Nice booty, nice stomach, nice face. You wouldn't be like, oh, I gotta go talk to her. Let's say you weren't dating her. Yeah. I could admire it, but it, it wouldn't be like, it wow, would... I want that. Oh, wow. I'd have to talk to her, and then if she can hold a conversation with me, I, then I'd be so turned on, for real. Yeah. You know? I For me, the way I look at it is the looks are the key, but the house itself is the intelligence. And it's like, I can't even get into the house unless I have the key. Yeah, you need to be, yeah, I know what you're saying, somewhat attractive, right? You need some level yeah, of attractiveness, of course. Yeah, physical. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they don't need to be a 10. Yeah. I'd be happy with, I'm a... People are going to get pissed. Oh, putting Bro. numbers on us. No, I would agree with that because within limits, I don't want my girl being 500 pounds, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the key is like, when I say physical key, like the key is important for me to get <coughs> in the house. Once I'm in the house, the key is not enough. I put it in my pocket. It's all good. Like the house is what I want. The mind is what I want. Yeah. And that's really hard to find, bro. Super. Yeah. Very few girls I can actually hold a conversation with that are single and like our age because I feel like yeah. a lot of the good ones are taken by now. Well, Yeah. That's super tough, bro. It's like, uh, I, I think a lot of women, they want a 1% man, but they don't realize that they have to be 1% women. Mm. They could be a top 1% woman, not financially, obviously, but just like mentally. Yeah. Be a top 1% woman mentally. What makes you top 1% woman? It might differ like culture to culture, or whatever, but like in our, in our society, it's being well-educated. It's being aware of alternatives not going on with the mainstream yeah it's understanding how to hold a conversation and you know just uh taking care of themselves being super super fit not like a professional athlete but just being fit um, not getting sick all the time mm -hmm. what what for you makes like a top one percent woman uh mainly just intelligence and ambition and then yeah that's really it like it, what's your what's your drive you know yeah, that's interesting. Ambition. That's important to me because you want to be around good energy. If they're just sitting home all day, I don't really like that too. Where do you, where, what, what attracts you like in terms of where her ambition is channeled? Uh, if she's truly passionate about it, I'll support it. If it's towards what? Like it can't be only fans, obviously, but uh, like something. What if it's a game? She likes gaming, World of Warcraft. That's more of a hobby to me, unless she's pursuing streaming. Oh. Then I would support it. But if she's just gaming for fun without like... What if she's doing art for fun? Ooh, that's a tough one just because art is hard to monetize. So you're attracted to the ambition towards what can be monetized? In... Ah, that's tough. Yeah, not, it's probably changed because now I have money. So, yeah. I haven't had to think about this because I've been with the same girl for seven years. So oh, we wow. were broke when we met. Wow, 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 wow. You know wow, what I mean? Wow. So I've, I really haven't had to think about stuff like this. Let's think about it, bro, because I used to think the same way. I used to be so unattracted to my girl because she didn't have a job. Yeah. Now I'm like, I don't even want a girl with a job. Yeah, now that I have what I need, I actually, yeah, it doesn't matter as much. Right. But when she was pursuing, like, she wanted to be a doctor, I was, like, supporting that at the time. 
Right. So I was broke, and I was like, okay. Oh, I, I can put myself back there and feel the same way. I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So now it's less about what can be monetized. More about what makes her happy makes us happy, I'd say, these days. Yeah, because she doesn't really need to work, so just do what, what makes you happy. And now that we want to have kids, what makes the family happy? Cool, and, bro. Yeah. I love that. Seven years. That's solid. Congrats. It's solid. I'm getting married next year, dude. No way. Yeah, crazy. Dude, in Vegas? In uh, Jersey. Oh, wow. That's we weren't, fair. like, in any of the Vegas venues. Oh, I can imagine. I think if you get married in Vegas, people assume it's at, like, some random little $2 church. Yeah, we're naturistic, so we need something outdoors with trees and beautiful Love plants it. everywhere. Cool. Jersey. Congrats, bro. Thanks, man. Got what about on, you, man? You got down on one knee? I did. And I didn't even know this, but I thought everyone knew engages were a surprise, engagements. But apparently people plan theirs out with the couple, like, with the other person. I wouldn't have thought. I would engage on surprise, too. That's what I did, yeah. So she had no idea. She had no idea. But apparently some girls know, know it's coming, coming, and they plan it, and they wear what they're going to wear. Oh, damn. I was like, damn, I wish I did that. Really? <laughs> no, I'm no. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I was pretty anxious, man. What was sure. it like? We did it in Sedona. Yeah, but how long did it take you to... Okay, wh when you made the decision to the time you actually did it, how oh, long months, was it? and I was thinking about it daily. It's a tough decision. So you're like, I'm going to marry this woman. And then months go by, and you're thinking about it daily. I'm thinking on how to plan it and everything, because that means a lot to women. How like, do you get a ring size? I asked her. When? How? Uh, oh, so here's how I played it. It was really smart, right? I was like, babe, let's get aura rings. Fuck yeah. So and this was like a while ago. So um, I, I was like, yeah, they need your ring size for it. So we measured it for that. But then I, <laughs> I got the wrong size. <laughs> <laughs> got the wrong size on mine, so I don't even use it. Damn, dude. So I wasted like 500 bucks. But her size fit. Her size fit, yeah. And do you propose with an aura ring? No, I didn't. Oh, I bought a, a, a really nice ring, actually, because that matters to them. That does, bro. Yeah. Wow. Congrats, man. What, and so uh, you planned it out. You're like, your high heart rate? Hella, yeah. I <laughs> forgot my whole speech. I practiced it for you days. Your speech? Yeah, I forgot everything. Bro, what's like, what's like the opener? Uh, something really cheesy, bro. Like, from the moment I met you and you, <laughs> you know, some shit like that, you know? But then I forgot the whole middle and I was like, fuck. Dog. You were how old when you proposed? 26. That was last year. Yeah, in Sedona. Damn, bro. Emotions were high, man. When you said from the moment I met you, did you say that on, on your knee? Yeah, dude, we recorded it, too. I have it on video somewhere. And did she start crying? Yeah. We were both tearing <laughs> up. I was like, shit, I've never been this emotional. Wow, bro. Because so I've held the back emotions most of my life. Gonna get you on that breath work, bro. That helps. Yeah, it helps with the trauma, you said. Yeah, that rapid breath work. She'll yeah. just come up, man. I got to release that childhood trauma. Be good for you and your girl to do together. Yeah. Just lay next to each other and do that for a solid 30 minutes. Just stuff will come. Oh. Mm, we both have some. So I just found out you're actually attracted to people subconsciously based off past traumas too, which is crazy. So similar traumas? Yeah. If someone has had similar trauma to you, your subconscious will pick up on it and you'll be attractive to that person. And me and her have a lot of similar uh, traumas. So. And when you say trauma, you mean like something really shitty happened in your childhood that didn't get fully processed? Yeah, we all have our own, like, whether it's physical, verbal, or just bad memories. Do you think it's possible for someone to be 27 and not have trauma? Like, could they have just the perfect... The perfect life? No, because think about it. Even if you're born into wealth, you still have some sort of trauma. Feeling like you're not enough or being compared to your parents. There's different forms. People so think, trauma's a must. I think everyone has some form, but some are terrible. Like, some are PTSD level, and then some are just minuscule. I think everyone has it, man. What do you There's think? There's definitely a scale to it. Yeah. It's like autism. <laughs> you know, that showed up too on my scan. So I was like, okay. Slightly autistic? It wasn't slightly, bro. <laughs> no way. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Does that mean you're more likely to have an autistic child, like fully autistic yeah, child? Yeah, they said that one passes down, I believe, 70 to 90%. And it runs in my family already, so. Wow, bro. Yeah. It's those 10 fucking jabs you got. No, I didn't get shit. No, I thought you got 10. Oh, high for school. school. Yeah, could have been. Could have been, man. Dude, the amount of people, the, I think it's like, the stati I could be wrong, but I think the statistic now is like one in 50 kids are fully autistic. It might be in like America. in the 30s, actually. I was going to say 30, but I want to be wrong. But yeah. It could be one in 30. That's insane. At the rate we're going, it'll be one out of two, and then almost everyone will have it at a certain point if we keep doing this. It's becoming more of a trendy word to say, too. I noticed like people are like, 
oh, can I get the step-by-step instructions? I want it written out artistically. <laughs> yeah, it's more casual now. Before artist- it's like shame. Artistic level detail. I remember when I was in school, it, it, we like kids got made fun of for having uh-huh. it for sure, like being in the special class. But now it's definitely more embraced. So you're attracted to her uh, subconscious. You're attracted to Jelly's subconscious. You propose. Get the wedding coming up in a year. What? Um, well, how are you going to raise your kid, bro? Public school? Hell no. Either homeschool or some really advanced private where they're learning skills. How are you going to do homeschool? Just hire someone really good. I wouldn't have uh, the time, but I'll also take them to my business meetings and stuff like Grant Cardone does. Oh, bro. His daughters are killing it. Her da- his daughters are savages, dude. So cool. Yeah. You going to have a boy or girl? I want one of each. I used to want just boys, but now I want one of each. I think a daughter is very healing to have. That's Are you going to keep going until you have one of each? Yeah, probably. I want three, I think. We'll see. So if you get to your fourth boy, are you going to go more? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> Four is a lot. Because I want like five dogs, too. I want a dog for each kid. Oh, that's at cool. At least. Yeah, maybe two dogs for each. Wow. So let's talk about uh, what it requires to afford a big ass family and five dogs and i assume a decent sized house and property what are you doing for income you have the pod which doesn't seem like it's generating much income what are you actually doing for income the pod's doing about 100k a month from what from um revenue from sponsors views and paid guests youtube ad views youtube and tiktok yeah and people pay to be on your show yeah Oh, wow. Not everyone. If, if they have a big following, then I don't charge them. So they pay to get attention. Yeah. Yeah, and our best month was 161K. This month we did 120-something. And most of that is from what? Uh, I'd say paid guests. Or wow, probably like I didn't know that was a thing. S- most business shows charge, yeah. I'd say the to- all the top business shows charge. Do you, are you, do you have to post their reels if you're not good? Um... You bring someone on, they pay you 10K or whatever. And I guarantee three reels personally. And you will post it on your show. Yeah. Wow, bro. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the top shows out here in Vegas charge. It's pretty what interesting. If, what if, if they suck, you just refund them? If the episode sucks, yeah. Uh, it happened once. I've only had to refund one person ever. But yeah. It was and so bad. You could tell from the... How'd that, <laughs> how'd, how'd that go down? It's just like... Were you skeptical before? If they're monotone... That's the main thing because you can make anything interesting with the right tonality and right messaging, but it's tough when you're like I have on billionaires and sometimes the episode sucks because they're monotone or they can't elaborate like in a mass audience setting. Mass audience setting? Yeah, because they can't relate. You know what I mean? They're so rich that the common man, they can't even wow. understand what that guy's saying. Have you ever had a or did you ever want to have Jordan Belford on? Yeah, I'd reached out. He's taking a little hiatus, I noticed. But okay. when he's back on the media tour, I'll definitely have him on. Because you just run me like tonality, and he's like the tonality king. Yeah, it's important. My my girl gives me shit because sometimes I use the wrong tone. I think it's the autism. With her? Yeah. Like, like sometimes I'll speak in a negative way according to her, but I don't even realize I'm doing like it. Like you'll be like, yo, do the dishes. Yeah. Instead of like, yo, can you do the dishes? Yeah. Something like that. And that, girls pick up on that shit, dude. Like the way you ask, so... Tone, bro. I've been experimenting with that in person just for fun lately. Because I, I I once had a Galaxy watch. Where you could record your voice. Yeah. And I would just record myself going up talking to people. Clerks, people in the parking lot, whatever. Just random conversations. And I noticed I was never, I never liked the way I sounded. And it wasn't like my voice was bad. It was just my inflections. Mm. I kept ending with an upward inflection. <laughs> And it sounded so lame. <laughs> so I started experimenting more recently and speaking with more of like a neutral tone or downward inflections at the end of my sentences. Mm-hmm. So instead of like, hey, how's it going? It's more like, hey, how's it going? Just more calm, cool, collected. Yeah. And it's interesting because the default keeps going back to like, hey, how's it going? And you sound so weak and lame. Yeah, yeah. For sure you do. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a sign of weakness, right? They've done studies on tonality and how to end sentences and appear more confident. It's just, it's uh, we do it subconsciously to mean like, hey, we mean no harm. We come in peace. Yeah. Because if someone comes up to you and like, hey, how you doing? You might be kind of scared. Hey, how you doing? But if you imagine like a big black guy, he might sound like that. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. I, I notice I do it with girls. 
Downward inflection? No, upward. Uh huh. Because I'm I don't know why, but girls I guess have a soft spot for them. Yeah, but they don't like that. They don't. Subconsciously, they like the downward, bro. Shit. There is a killer video on YouTube, maybe Instagram Reels, of this guy picking up this chicken Chipotle, mm. getting her number. He goes up to her. He says the worst lines ever. <laughs> if you read the transcript of what he says, garbage. Yeah. But the way he says it, dude, she's in. Wow. Like the worst lines ever. So it's all tone then? All tone. It's interesting. His tone is incredible. You can, there's this hypnotist who can put people to sleep just with tone. Mm. Not even speaking English. Holy crap. He just goes like, where was your girl? 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 These people just, they're out. Damn. Yeah, tone is so key. So we have a we have a sales script for our business. We do sales calls, and when I'm reviewing our sales calls, the people who sign up to work with us are the people we use the right tone with. The people who don't buy, they're the people we use terrible tone with. Mm. So it's not what is said in the sales conversation. It's how it's said. And same with speaking with women, same with speaking with your wife, your kids. Th think about all the different ways of saying, like, put that away. Yeah. Can you put that away? Put that away! <laughs> right? Same thing, different tone. Yeah. So, sorry, back to your income streams. You've got the uh, pod. Yeah, the pod's the main one. I do some affiliate stuff, which brings in, like, 50K a month on what average. Stuff? I did uh, ERC when that was hot, employee retention credit. Oh, wow. And then I, I'm doing SCTC right now. And we're we're approaching a million dollars there in profit. Um, yearly? Yearly. From affiliates. Yeah. Wow, bro. Because of my network, dude. So cool. And you just bring no brainer offers. It's such an easy plug and play. I mean, those wow. two offers are so easy. I'm testing out uh zero percent funding offers right now. That's doing pretty well. Sweet. Yeah. And helping people get loans and stuff. Uh business credit cards, zero percent interest for the first year. Amazing, bro. Hook me up. I did it on my show, dude. Cool. You get 100K, 0%. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, so let you me get know. Let me know. 11 months to pay it off. I got people who would buy that for sure. No, it's such a good offer. Um, I mean, you can't be an idiot with the money, but. Yeah, but it's great for business owners. Great. And, and crypto investors. Yeah. Oh, if you know a coin's going up, yeah, it's a no brainer. You in crypto? Yeah. So that's probably my third stream, but I don't count that as a stream because right, it's right, so right. up and down and I never liquidate even when it's up. That's more of a an asset, I guess. You're into Bitcoin mostly? And Ethereum. And Ethereum, those two. Ethereum's my biggest, yeah. Oh, wow. Solana's my third. Yeah. Uh, I'm Bitcoin, Solana, Ether, Ethereum. Yeah. yeah, those three are my big three. Why do you have more Ethereum than Bitcoin? Because the ETF? Uh, I, I did a lot of NFT stuff. Uh, so I made a lot of Ethereum from that and just never cashed out. Interesting. Yeah. So, bit of crypto, the affiliate stuff, and the podcast. Any, like, stocks? No stocks pulled out of those when I was pretty much out of college. Um, and no real estate yet. I'm looking for my first house right now, actually. Wow. Yeah. But that's not really an investment, in my opinion. I would love to talk to you about houses, man. We're yeah. running out of time here, but I would love to have a whole talk on houses. Because I've was i been so close to buying houses so many times. Because, like, the, the emotional piece to it is so nice. What mm -hmm. you have with my fucking house, you know? But I travel so much, and I just I look at the... ROI on a house versus Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Bitcoin's appreciation versus the house's appreciation is insane. Mm. So that's why I just rent. I think if you're single, it makes so much sense. I'm mainly buying it for security and because I want to have a family. Uh -huh. So I, it's a little different situation. But what, if I was you. I'm curious though, because that comes up a lot. What would make it a difference if you were just renting with a family? So she, my girlfriend has a lot of trauma because the way she grew up, mm. she would get they rented their whole lives and sometimes the owners would kick them oh, out well within, if that's the case yeah that's the case so i she, see so she just doesn't want that so it's an emotional thing emotional yeah, yeah yeah that's the thing so for me exactly it's always an emotional thing too like i want a house for many reasons but they're all emotional mm -hmm. all I, every time i go back to my like, why do i actually want this it comes down to an emotion yeah and eventually i may honor that i mean like fuck it yeah my emotion wants it let's get it but I try to, everything I put in, money into, even my Tesla, I bought it for the logistical reasons. Mm -hmm. It is the safest car. Teslas? Yeah. Some people would say the opposite. It's, it's it proven objectively to be the safest car on so many different standards. So really? Tests, yeah. Okay. So if you're looking at it that way, I agree. But have you heard of the kill switch? Oh, when they press the button and you can no longer control the car? Yeah. Yeah, no. That's the fear with electric cars. Yeah, but that's uh, emotional. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if they front, want you dead, that's an sure. option. <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah the cyber trucks now 
all four wheels are not con- all four tires are not controlled by the wheel. Oh wow! It's all software. Holy crap! All software. So when you're turning the wheel, it just tells the computer to turn the tires. I have a Tesla. I like them. I saw a nice man. Yeah, I want to get the truck. Me too. It's a write-off too. It's over six thousand pounds. Yeah. Oh, it's a weight thing. Yeah. Oh no. That's way. why I bought the G wagon. Cool man. A little tax write-off. No well, way. Well, actually, no. IRS, if you're watching this, that's not why I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use it daily for business. Do we have to cut that out. <laughs> we <not>? might. <laughs> um cool man well i think uh if people are watching this and they want to know how to absolutely crush it with podcasts they should definitely follow you on instagram your instagram is sean mike kelly yeah yeah stay tuned i might launch a podcast course slash community something there on school maybe do it on school bro i'll be your first customer oh yeah thank you that'd be rad thanks so much bro yeah thanks for coming on or thanks for (laughs) me coming on (laughs) i'm so used to saying thanks for coming on